I'm in the portal for Azure at portal.azure.com. And we see here an option for Azure Active Directory. So even if you haven't configured anything for Azure Active Directory, you will see this icon. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that icon. And then I'm going to click on users. Now, by default, you're going to get a list of users at the onmicrosoft.com. So, for instance, I'm doing the click x3.onmicrosoft.com. So you'll be prompted the first time that you go to create anything in admin.microsoft.com for a particular name to put in front of the dot on microsoft.com. Now, once you do that, then you'll have the opportunity to add new users. If you choose to add new users in this particular area with the Microsoft Azure and the Azure Active Directory, you can certainly do that. However, you won't have the opportunity to add the licenses you need. So there are two different places where you can add users for Azure. So I'll go ahead and show you the one through Active Directory, and then I'll show you the one through the Admin Center. And under the username, I'll just go ahead and type in a name and I can choose any one of the domains that I have. You may only have the one on Microsoft.com domain and that's fine as well. And then I'll just go ahead and fill this out. Now we can choose to auto generate a password and then it's going to email me what that password is or I can go ahead and type in the password. So it's totally up to you what you want to do. I'll just choose the auto generate and if you want to see what it is you can show it and then you can copy it. Uh, that way you don't have to wait for the email to show up. And that'll go to whoever is the admin. I can also go in and add groups. So if I had some groups, I can go ahead and add and say for admins and select that. And then there's roles. This is something that on-premises Active Directory doesn't have. So roles have to do with the roles of the ability to do things within Azure Active Directory. It has nothing to do with the security groups you're in that give you access to resources. So I'll go ahead and take a look at some of these. You have conditional access, desktop analytics administrator. The one with the most amount of rights is going to be the, the uh, global administrator, which is going to be right here. Anything else is going to have just individual or several subtype groups besides the global administrator. So I'll just say that this particular user is going to be the groups administrator. Or you can just say this user doesn't have any rights at all to the Azure Active Directory. It's totally up to you. It just depends on the type of user. Then you have the opportunity to block sign in. Of course, we don't want to do that if this is going to be a group administrator role. Uh, but if it wasn't, then you can block sign in if you'd like. Then you've got the usage location. So you can choose where they are located. This is not something you have to do, but we'll just go ahead and put this in. And then we have the opportunity to add in the title, department, company name, things like that. And if that user has a manager. So I'm just going to block all that and just click on create. And if I want to save the password, I can. I don't need to. And here it shows me that the user was successfully created. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my users and just refresh. And there's our new user that I just created. Now, the other way to do this is to go to admin.microsoft.com. And you want to log in with the same user. And here you can go to either add or edit a user. So I'll click on add a user and I'll put in the information. And once again, I'm automatically creating a password or I can uncheck that and manually enter the password. I can require the user to change their password when they first sign in. This is a fairly new feature. And what this does is it allows you to give everybody the same password if you're creating a whole bunch of users. And then the first time they log in, as they're all using a shared password, then they get forced to change the password. Then you have a send password and email upon completion. And then you say who it is that should get that email. I'm going to choose next. And I don't need to save that one. Now I need to choose to add in the licenses. So this is the option that you were missing when you created it through Azure Active Directory. So if you do it that way, you got to come back here anyway and edit the user to add in the licenses unless they don't need a license. And in most cases, of course, they will. So I've got some developer licenses. I'll go ahead and assign that, but you'll probably see different types of licenses. And then I have the option for what type of admin access I want them to have, or I can show them all by category. I don't really need to do that. So I'll just click next and I'll make sure everything looks great. And it does. And I'll just click finish. 
And if I want to save this as a template because I want them to be all members of the same groups or have the same type of license, then I can add this as a template if I'd like. But I don't really want this to be a template, so I'll just click Close. Now I'm going to go back to Home for the 365 Admin Center. I'm going to click on Show All, and it shows me the option for users, which I did not see before, and I'll click on Active Users. Now, I can see the Andrew account that I created earlier because these synchronize with Azure Active Directory, and I can also see Ben's name as well. To the right of that shows the email address as well as the licenses. So this is really the area that I recommend you create the user. Otherwise, you'll have to come back to here anyway and edit that user to add the license. Then once that user is created, then you can go back to the user section. You can add them to groups and make other changes that you can't make in the admin center. So these are the two different ways to create users in the Azure portal.